Hi guys, uh, today I'll be teaching an easy method of uh, remembering and drawing the brachial plexus. It seems to be a difficult topic for a lot of people. Uh, so this is the method I myself use and I hope you guys find this useful. So we'll just jump into the topic. Today's topic is the brachial plexus. Okay, so brachial plexus is, plexus just means like it's a bunch of nerves. So these bunch of nerves are present in our neck behind in the posterior aspect. So this whole thing is present in the posterior triangle of the neck. So it includes branches from the C5 to the T1 vertebra. So that's the first thing we're going to be drawing here. So you have the C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1. So these are uh, the roots that contribute to the brachial plexus. So I know sometimes it's confusing to remember the order of the brachial plexus, you know, roots, you know, branches, divisions, cord. So there's a small mnemonic for that and that is, uh, I'll just uh, show you here. That is Robert Tree Drinks Cold Beer. It's as simple as that. So you have R for root, T for trunk, T for division, C for cord, and B for branches. So Robert Tree Drinks Cold Beer. So for people who find it difficult to remember the sequence, this is a very simple mnemonic to remember the sequence of the brachial plexus. So now we'll dive into the brachial plexus. Okay. Um, so these roots, C5 and C6, combine to give the upper trunk. C7 continues as the middle trunk. C8 and T1 combine to give the lower trunk. I hope that's simple. I'm going to be putting these small dots so we can differentiate between the root and the trunk and so on, trunk in the division and so on. So these, so this is the upper trunk, this is the middle trunk, and this is the lower trunk. Okay. Each of these trunks further give two divisions, anterior and posterior division. So upper trunk will give an anterior and posterior division. Okay, this is the anterior and posterior division. Middle trunk will give an anterior and posterior division. Lower trunk will give an anterior and posterior division. Okay, I have drawn it a little up and down, you know, anterior and posterior, because I wanted all the post. I want to just show that all the posterior branches or the posterior trunks will together join. Okay. Oh, sorry, the posterior divisions will join together. So I will just put that in a different shade. All these posterior divisions, they are joining together. Okay. And then the anterior division of the upper and the middle trunk are joining together. Okay. And the anterior division of the lower trunk just continues on its own. So till now we've discussed the roots okay the chunks now we discuss division okay after this will come obviously the chords okay so the chords are we gonna be doing the chords now the anterior division of the upper and the anterior division of the middle trunk together combine to form the lateral cord okay the all the posterior divisions from all the three trunks they combine to form the posterior cord okay and the anterior division of the lower trunk continues as the medial cord okay so this is your lateral cord this is your posterior cord and this is your 
medial cord is that clear this is a little difficult uh, the naming the nomenclature of this is because of the placement of these cords around the axillary artery that will be easier for you if i show you a cut section of the diagram or the cut section of the diagram of the arm which shows the axillary artery and its relations so no need to worry i will be showing only the cords here okay so here's the diagram so this is the cut section of arm at axilla because when you take a cut section you will be able to see the cords only in the axilla the division will be above the axilla so if this is the axial artery obviously this is the medial aspect lateral aspect anterior aspect posterior aspect the medial cord is present medial to the axillary, axillary artery okay so it's this is present medial lateral cord is present lateral to the axillary artery and posterior cord is present posterior to the axillary artery this is why we've named the cords in such a way so now that we've seen that we'll get back to our brachial plexus now at the end we have our branches so the posterior cord will just divide right here okay the lateral cord and the medial cord will join like this and it will give you a nerve here then this okay i know it looks like a little rocket but this is the easiest way to remember the brachial plexus so now you have your terminal branches so this we come to the branches part of it we come to the branches part of it okay the terminal branches will be the mnemonic for this is marmu now that's like the weirdest thing but that is the mnemonic to remember it so that is mar mu okay this m stands for musculo cutaneous nerve axillary nerve radial nerve mar mu median nerve and ulnar nerve okay so this is the main skeleton of the brachial plexus the main skeleton the main breakdown of the brachial plexus is this way isn't that simple i hope you guys found that simple okay so it's very easy to trace where and how each of these nerves are arising also if you have this diagram with you you'll know the root value of axillary nerve is c7 c5 c6 and c7 because here the anterior division the posterior division of upper middle that continues with the posterior and lower continues as axillary and radial so it's axillary and radial nerve basically have all of these roots contributing to it okay and then you have similarly you can trace the root values of everything so for muscular cutaneous nerve it's getting a branch from here here and then forming a muscular cutaneous nerve so that's very simple so that will be c5 c6 and c7 for muscular cutaneous nerve so like that we can trace for each and every nerve here okay so that is our brachial plexus now let's see the branches which arise from the brachial plexus okay so very simple this also i want you to draw a line here okay just like this then one line joining these two three roots and coming out here okay um one from here and three from here okay and two here no oh, seems really weird but it's not that difficult guys come on pull that line now okay so coming from the root you have just two branches two branches from the root okay this this c5 c6 c7 combines to give the long thoracic nerve okay so the long thoracic nerve it supplies your serratus anterior muscle this is the dorsal scapular nerve dorsal scapular nerve will su supply the rhomboids muscles the rhomboids major and the rhomboids minor muscle 
and then you have this the lateral cord will give rise to the lateral pectoral nerve the medial pectoral nerve will come from here and the medial cord obviously then the posterior cord will give three branches that is the uh, upper subscapular lower subscapular and the thoracodorsal okay upper subscapular lower subscapular and thoracodorsal that's simple and the medial cord will give rise to the medial brachiocutaneous nerve and the medial anti brachiocutaneous nerve okay so this will be the medial cutaneous nerve of arm this is the medial cutaneous nerve of forearm that's about it so this is the whole brachial plexus uh, i'll tell you guys about the detail not detail we'll just brush over where in all these nerves uh, have their supply into which muscles and that will be in the next video so i hope you guys found this one easy if you want to see the nerve which muscles the nerve supply then please go to the next video